Welcome back to Perth, Western Australia, as we are now on the pre-team division here at the World Ninja League Premier Series. First time we're taking this series international, and certainly not the last. Hello everyone, I'm Alex Cunningham alongside Mary Layton. Mary, you have been along here for the kids and mature kids. What are we expecting out of these pre-teens? Well, thank you, Alex, for that introduction. Hello, everybody. My name is Mary. I'm the Commentator Ninja. And what we can expect here today is a tricky placement course followed by a grip gauntlet of a challenge course. We have some pretty high-level athletes in our pre-teen division here today. A lot of these athletes have placed very well in the Ninja Challenge League, which is a uh, competition league that is hosted often by Ninja Academy. So, yep. It, we're in for a fun ride. There's definitely some differences between Ninja in Australia versus Ninja in the USA, and we're very excited to show that to you today. It is an emerging scene. Obviously, it's been over here in the States for a lot longer, and various things, for instance, the geography of Australia. Um, if, if you've ever seen like a population map, um, of Australia like there's you know, a lot of people in Perth and Melbourne and Sydney and so even within Australia um, you see often you know different groups of athletes it, it's a little bit more fluid in America because for instance you have New Englanders going to Southeast comps Southeasterners going to South Central comps and so forth largely in Australia it, it seems to be more uh, Se I don't even really want to say segregated, but um, it, it's very much an emerging scene and not very often do we have a day like today where we get to see all of Australia competing all at once. So I'm very excited to see what Australia has in store. Absolutely. Well, we've if uh, our previous rounds are any indication of what we have coming up, it'll be quite exciting. We definitely see a wide range of skill levels um, amongst all of the athletes. We have some ninjas that are early on in their ninja journey, still really getting comfortable with their competition feet underneath them, and, and some athletes that have put up some really solid runs. So um, one person to look out for is going to be Noah Brown. Um, so he has had stage one and two buzzers at WNL Worlds this year, so no stranger to Ninja USA. So we'll expect to see some quick moves out of him. And he was also the um, Western Australia uh, NCL Regional Champion, so in seasons 20 and 21. So quite the pedigree coming into this competition. Certainly, and if I'm not mistaken, we saw him last week at Motive, and he performed at a very high level. So this should be a really exciting competition. Why don't we go over the rules of the placement course and the challenge course, Alex? Now, why don't we keep our audience up to speed on exactly how today's competition is going to run? Sure thing. So we're going to have two separate courses for each of these athletes. Everybody's going to get to run both. Starting with the placement course, it's your traditional flow format. Fall and you're done. It's a very quick course. It's going to be a speed course. They're going to come in fast and furious. Mary, I know you like to say every course is a speed course. But this is going to be a speed course among speed courses. And that will determine the run order for the challenge course. Now in the challenge course, it's a new format for the WNL in Season 9. We're introducing it here in the Premier Series. You're going to get two retries for the entire course. This is the first time in WNL you're going to get a retry. But you can't use both retries on the same obstacle. You do have to complete the obstacle in order to move on to the next. And that's going to be, this is going to be a lot tougher of a course. It's going to be a grip gauntlet. It's going to be very heavily endurance based. And so we're really going to get to see the best all-around ninjas being on top of the podium. Yeah, this is a challenge of the best of the best. It's the top 25% from our regular season and I believe from the NCL season. And so one thing that we can expect to see here with the... Um, the sorry, excuse me. One of the things we can expect to see here on the Grip Gauntlet course... In our previous competitions at Ferox and at Motive, there were a couple of obstacles where you could get a little bit a little bit hung up, right? And so you would want to reset and restart the obstacle. So you saw the athletes making strategic choices on when to use their resets to really just save themselves and save a little bit of time. Here so far today, we have seen one obstacle that was particularly tricky, which was the fish hooks at the very end of the challenge course. 
Um, the athletes really getting a little bit hung up trying to navigate those. So we did see a few athletes take their reset on that if they got too helter-skelter, but I think we may see some differences for the preteen course here today, so it'll be interesting to see if that retry does come in more strategically for the athletes here. Oh, absolutely. And we've seen over the last two weeks, the course really ramps up in difficulty as we go from the mature kids to the preteens, thinking back to Ferox, for instance, where the Skyhooks obstacle became so much more difficult once we got from mature kids to preteens. So I'm expecting a sim similar level of difficulty bump here today at Ninja Academy. To be sure. Alex, what obstacle do you think you've never seen that you'll see today? I don't know how to answer that without being uh, <laughs> too clairvoyant, but I know we've seen some insane things out of Dave Ravi in the past. Um, the one obstacle that I always use as an example, there was an obstacle at Ninja Challenge League a couple years ago where uh, if you're familiar with the hole punch obstacle, you have to push um, two dowels through some blocks with holes. And usually you just, you know, it, it's very steady. You just push it to the end. It was in uh, the World Championship a couple years ago, actually. Mm -hmm. But these were floating hole punches, and you had to take the dowels all the way out of the hole punch and put them into another hole punch, and there was four of them. And that was assuming that you beat the cliffhanger with sloper directly into vertical limit. So <laughs> Dave Ravi knows difficult courses. And I was talking with Jack last weekend and he said, Dave Ravi is the kind of course designer that doesn't want you to clear his courses. So I have a feeling he still has some tricks up his sleeve. That floating punch outs sounds absolutely diabolical. I might have to do it in my next course. That has to be a grip gauntlet. Wow. <laughs> I, I may have Intense. accidentally unleashed that into the world as we see Dave uh, giving the athletes some last minute advice on how to complete this course. Well, another thing I'm liking about these Australia courses is there's a lot more balance in them. Not, not overrun with balance, but a couple of tricky uh, obstacles that It's obviously a very important part of the competition, all the athletes getting out their questions. They don't, you, you don't necessarily want to give beta to your fellow competitors, but you always want to make sure that something is legal so that you don't get caught off guard when you're up on the course. We're just getting some last second rules clarifications and we'll get started here in just a little bit. we might be doing a group picture perhaps taking one more look at the run order obviously these are going to be athletes that you guys at home are seeing for the first time what i really love about this premier series is that we're going to be going we're obviously here in australia we're going to be going to both the uk and israel next month and it really gives an opportunity for a worldwide audience to get more familiar with these athletes and for these athletes to compete on a very big stage. Obviously, they're not used to having such a big audience internationally. And I'm just so excited to get a glimpse into, you know, various countries emerging ninja scenes. Unfortunately, I think we're having some technical difficulties on Mary's side, but... I will take you through some of the upcoming qualifiers that we have on the schedule. We're here at Perth, Western Australia, here at Ninja Academy this weekend. Next weekend, back over the States, we're going to be going to Cedar Park, Texas, Austin Ninjas. Still spots there if you have qualified to register. We do hope to see you there next week. And three weeks from now, we will be at Modus Ninjas in the Kansas City area. So Austin and Kansas City are coming up next for you Central U.S. ninjas or perhaps some East Coast ninjas wanting a second chance at the course. Then we will be heading to our Europe tour, so to speak, where we will be heading to Gil Morantz's gym out in Israel. Uh, 
those of you that saw Ferox met Gilmorantz. He is a very strong ninja, very quick. And that Israeli scene is really growing. It is probably the fastest growing scene of any country, um, just by percentage. So I'm very excited to see what they have in store. Uh, same for the UK. Hopefully we're going to get to see some of our European friends there. And then we close out up in the Seattle area for Life at uh, Life Force Ninja on September 23rd and 24th. And it looks like we are rejoined by Mary just in time for Angelina Carey to get us kicked off. Oh, yes. Could not miss Angelina Carey. Had a couple of Wi-Fi issues right there, but we are back. And, oh, it looks like this course is definitely different than what we saw for the kids and mature kids. So we are getting our first look. Oh, no. Oh, no. Just and not able Angelina, to get up there on the train. So go ahead. Yeah, Angelina just missed that that jump up to the butterfly special. That's an unfortunate start for her, but, you know, we have seen athletes start off without the best of runs in the placement and really come back and have some phenomenal runs in the challenge course. So hopefully Angelina can pull that off today. We certainly have, and I'm a little bit worried about that trampoline for some of the athletes that don't quite have that reach yet. You really need to be explosive off of that trampoline, especially when you're jumping down into it compared to just running into it. Absolutely. Especially uh, the angle of the trampoline that can really impact where you need to place your feet and also what you were saying exactly how much you need to really punch it to get up to that. But it looks like Angelina just missed it um, only slightly. So hopefully we'll uh, be able to see her um, have a better run in her challenge course. Well, everyone will get to run the challenge course. So we will be seeing Angelina and all 11 of our preteens later on this evening. Sophia Davies will be our next athlete, and we can see their Ninja Works IDs here. We can all see that they're relatively new. So these athletes new to the World Ninja League scene, but certainly not new to Ninja. These athletes have, of course, been competing in the Ninja Challenge League here in Australia, as well as various local competitions. So this is certainly the best of the best from the other side of the world. All right, and here goes Sophia. Oh, watch out, don't tip the box. <laughs> That'd be a rough way to start Let's the course. Let's not do that. Through the shrinking steps easily. Another look at this trampoline jump, testing it out. Good idea. There we and go. And she makes it. Got it, and using those knots on the ropes for her feet. Very smart, gets through those ropes a little bit faster as she will be the first to take on the spine runner in this division. We saw this briefly in the intro video and this, a pretty rough balance obstacle, but she gets through it. Harkens back to an obstacle Kane and I were talking about um, from a few years into Challenge League Finals, although that was a bit more um, pipe balance. It looks like we have a little flying squirrel action here. Just not able to hang on to the handles, though. Had the right idea. But sometimes it's tough to get off of, you know, independently swinging elements like rings compared to just a trapeze bar or a regular bar, for that matter. Yeah, her swing was not quite enough for her to really fully get there. We were discussing earlier the trapeze swing is appearing to be a little bit of a, of a sticking point here in the placement course. We saw that in Mature Kids um, with the the had to build some swing up on but hopefully we can see our rest of our athletes overcome that and we'll see what the rest of this placement course looks like well ashley congreen should be the third and final preteen female we only have three female athletes competing today in our preteen division. What that will mean later is that they have to clear three obstacles. So really want to get oh. into the placement course. Oh no. That was a great jump too. Just wasn't able to find her hands in that hold. And the peel is real, but looks like she's doing okay. Well, I think we're going to see much stronger ones for our female athletes in the uh, challenge course here. Just look like they weren't quite warmed up. So, Hopefully by the time we get to the challenge course for them, they'll have some had some more time to warm up and, and really go kick some course out there. 
Certainly true as we enter the gentleman's portion of the program. Logan Chambers will be our first athlete. Great jump. One hop there. First athlete we've seen in the preteens taking one hop rather than testing out the trampoline. Great commitment to his movements. On to this balance obstacle here, the spine runner. Don't know if we'll see any athletes really running across that. Maybe a little bit later in the weekend. But great job from Logan getting through that. Yeah, I wonder how many athletes are going to step over those barriers rather than step on them. As our previous athlete that was there, Sophia, did step on that second one, which is in play. That might be fun for our, our viewers to predict in the comments how many athletes they think they'll see do that. And Logan is building up his swing. Looks like he's going to go for it soon. I Almost think he needs there. to get a little bit more knees into it and just barely didn't have the distance, unfortunately. But a strong run out of Logan. We will see how that holds. Yes, and again, placement courses, you everyone gets to go on to do the challenge course, but it's definitely an advantage to be able to watch the uh, athletes go before you on the challenge course, just in case there's any tricky beta and with the level up to this placement course uh, compared to the kids and mature kids, I think you're really going to want to be in a good position to see a few people go through that, uh, that challenge course. I completely agree. I think preteen male is the biggest division we've seen so far, so finishing high in the placement course will be even more of a benefit than it has been all day. As we're Definitely on to, agree. As we're on to Thomas Graves. Thomas with a little bit more life experience than Logan, but we've seen in Ninja that that is not always the case. I definitely get my butt kicked by some of my kids, but Thomas went for that one hop and wasn't able to find the handholds. That butterfly is taking names today. It's interesting. It looks, it's almost a funny special delivery hold. I was commenting on it earlier. I haven't seen a hold like that before, but I could definitely see how the, uh, the special delivery, uh, how do I say this, uh, difficulties that present themselves right. um, are, are, still, are still a thing with this one. Yeah, and with the ninja scene growing in Australia, obviously they will have been exposed to special deliveries thanks to the internet. But because Australia is a little bit newer, special deliveries aren't really as locked in as they are for American athletes. But they will definitely get there, especially after today when we're seeing that special delivery hold be so vicious already in the placement course. Well, hopefully our next athlete, Leo Garcia, who we'll see in a second here, is able to not only get past the butterfly special delivery, but we'll also be able to get through the flying squirrel move. We haven't seen anybody make that yet. Haven't seen anybody get past it. So we're not we're not even really sure what's in the rest of this placement course, but with a 130 time limit, I bet there's a I bet there's a little bit more going on. Oh, I'm sure there will be. And Leo wasn't even able to get the height there. This trampoline to butterfly. Tough move for our preteen athletes today. Wonder if it's starting to get in their heads. Mm, sometimes when you see some athletes fail something before you, it starts to zap your confidence and you, you don't always have as much commitment as you thought you could. So uh, I do hope these athletes start just stay focused on their own abilities and what they know they can do and, and go out and tackle it. I, I've definitely talked to some pro athletes that have seen the athlete before them go out earlier than they thought and it kind of shook them up a little bit but these kids are so resilient so hopefully they will just focus on their own runs like you said as we see liam joyce looking to be the third to be tr hello okay well when you can do that that certainly helps definitely a smart move out of liam joyce we saw his brother have a really strong run in mature or in the kids division actually taking first place so hopefully we can get a, a brother duo here. I love the set of the hips there. This is looking promising, Mary. Looking very efficient. I think we may get to see the rest of this course and plenty of time. 
We will as oh. Liam takes on the punching bag slider. Punching bag makes an appearance. Arguably a much easier dismount off of this one than we had for the kids and mature kids. And it's it looks all like the way to the top that there. is. And hits the buzzer. 51 seconds. Liam Joyce tearing into this course. I saw some phenomenal moves out of him. I really like how he tackled the fifth obstacle here. You saw him set his hip backs before his hips back before going to the flying squirrel. And that just gives you uh, a little bit of a, a preview into how efficient uh, he can be on the course. So definitely looking forward to his challenge run. Liam Joyce may be a breakout star here in Australia. The Joyce Bros, as they are called. Can we get a, a two for two on those first place finishes? Well, we are halfway through the preteen male placement course and we have seen a finisher. So that is a promising sight for Fletcher Manning, our next athlete. Now we did just say that in, in the previous run that you know, when an athlete fails earlier than you want, that you want to stick to your own run. But I feel like the opposite is true when somebody before you clears. That definitely gives you confidence that this course is beatable. Yes, for sure. Especially somebody of similar height and similar build. So Fletcher is probably around the same size as Liam. So he might be feeling pretty good about that trampoline jump. Is approaching hesitantly, though, testing it out. But nothing wrong with that. We'll see if he the tries jump. to grab the front. Now he grabs a special delivery and he's in. Very great work out of Fletcher so far. Choosing to lock off a little bit on that ring to get to his dismount. Well, he's onto the spine runner and he has been all focused since that clock started. Now I do think 50 seconds should be enough time to yes. finish the course, but he is going to have to keep moving through these obstacles. Lots of moves to be made. Looks like he kicked the box, going for the lache. And he's got nice it. Work. He's a little bit worried about that distance, but he has been in control and focused. And it is paying off right now. Makes the dismount. Two obstacles to go. Punching bag slider. Looks like he almost wasn't <laughs> sure where he was supposed to go there. Number one rule in ninja athletes, make sure you know where the next obstacle is. It will save you so much time. Speaking of time, 15 seconds left to get all the way up there. Shouldn't be any trouble for Fletcher. And we have a buzzer. Nicely done. And after all the trouble we had in the early part of this preteen division, we have now seen back-to-back -back clears. Yes, it makes me pretty excited for the rest of the wave. We have two more athletes competing. Three more athletes, excuse me who will be tackling the course. Can we get three more clears? What do you think? That would be very exciting to see. Now, Liam did have a faster time, so Fletcher will be running before him, but the way things are going, uh, especially with those earlier athletes, Fletcher still should have a pretty good run order in the challenge course. And if we do end up getting five clears, it is going to be extremely interesting to see how they play out in the challenge course as only four of those five would be able to move on and that's assuming that none of the other three sneak in which we've definitely seen in other competitions this is true i feel that um we saw this kind of play out in mature kids in the placement course we didn't really get a sense of of how these athletes moved on upper body obstacles um and in that placement course there really was only two true upper body obstacles at the end and with the tight time limit, some of the athletes had a hard time clearing. So we were actually really surprised on the challenge course by some of the athletes that, that showed up and were able to clear it. So you might see something similar here today. I think it's still anyone's game at this point. Well, I cannot wait for what lies in store in that challenge course, but still three more runners here on the placement course. Jai Whitby will be the first of those three. We saw Kari Whitby, uh, no, um, excuse me, we'll see Kari Whitby uh, later on in the amateurs tomorrow. But Jai is taking off. He is totally all about skipped speed. that rope. Definitely one of our taller preteens and using that height to his advantage. 
I think we'll see him go here. Ooh, oh, oh my wow. goodness! One-handed wow. save, reminiscent of Yuri a week ago. Wow, phenomenal performance over out of Jai. And I'm I'm seeing some some seeds of efficiency in the way that he moves through the obstacles as well, all the way up to the warp ball. This is going to definitely be the fastest time. And Jai absolutely torches this course in only 40 seconds. What a tremendous run. There's that skip to the ring. A nice pop. Oh, and that save. The best of the best really know how to make those recoveries, able to really dial it in, even when you only have one hand on an object like that getting spun around, but knowing exactly where he needed to put himself. Adam, yes. And that is tremendous wherewithal from a young man. And the grip strength, true. That bodes well for him for a more grip gauntlet style course. I'll bet. Well, he is certainly the young man to beat thus far, edging out Liam Joyce's time. Liam put up a very impressive run with 50 seconds a moment ago. And, of course, Fletcher Manning has also cleared, getting that buzzer. So we'll be seeing so Fletcher that's our, right around the middle portion of the run order. So go ahead. That's our one out of three. So now we have Adam Byrne. Is he going to be four out of four for clears? We will see. And Adam is underway. And he also goes right for the hop, but wasn't able to get into the... Hold. Oh, trampoline tech. Yeah. Something something for these athletes to work on. You, for those athletes that will be running earlier on in the challenge course, we really haven't get, gotten to see their skill set yet, and we certainly will have a better opportunity to in the challenge course. So hopefully we see some of those athletes. Turns out maybe they're secretly grip beasts. I'd love to see it. Me too. All right, Noah Brown, our athlete with quite the pedigree, stage one and stage two buzzers in WNL Worlds in 2023. You had to be fast to do that in this division, and that is exactly what we're seeing. Oh my goodness, he oh went a little no. too fast and took a hit on the platform. Disastrous for Noah. Oh, I hope he's okay, because we're going to be seeing him pretty soon in the in the challenge course he he did have a super lightning fast time through the first obstacle so um he'll have a couple of runners before he has to hit the challenge course i i think that he's one that's definitely going to come up from behind and potentially snag himself a spot in the top four even though placement didn't go well you saw how quick he was moving you saw how aggressive he was i think there's a lot more in the tank for this young athlete certainly true and we saw some flashes of brilliance last week at motive Noah was over in the States for some competitions, including WNL Worlds, made a mini summer out of it, now back here in his native Australia. And even though he'll be running in the middle of the challenge course, still a lot to see out of that young man. But how about Jai Whitby, Liam Joyce, and Fletcher Manning hitting the buzzer on what has proved to be one of the more difficult placement courses that we've seen this season? Yeah, those were some phenomenal performances, particularly Jai. I was really, really impressed by how quickly he moved. And I mean, you can't forget about that save, that that oh, one-handed save on the flying squirrels. And to still come out of that with the fastest time, I mean, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get another look at it here. Taking the skip, there it is, right there. Totally missed with one hand, able to save it. Definitely going to be an exciting uh, challenge course run for him. That save will be on the weekend highlight reel for sure. But Jai Whitby still has all to play for in the challenge course, as we will see him run last. Liam Joyce, Fletcher Manning will be right before him. And, of course, Logan Chambers, who was the only athlete to beat that really difficult trampoline butterfly but not clear, after he just wasn't able to reach the squirrel, but we will see how his grip strength fares in the challenge course. And over on the preteen female side, 
similar story where the trampoline butterfly turned out to be vicious, but it was Sophia Davies who had a very strong run making it to the Lachey line. We need to get Angelina's run fixed up there, but it'll be Ashley and Angelina running before Sophia, who will get all the beta from her fellow competitors in the challenge course. And that is going to be coming up next. Stick around. She can't get the run order until we find out what her thing is. Yeah. Can't go here. Welcome back to Ninja Academy in Perth, Western Australia. We have just seen the preteens take on the placement course. We definitely see some breakout athletes and breakout obstacles. We saw a very vicious trampoline butterfly take out some of the competitors earlier than they would have liked. But they have some redemption here in the challenge course. Just to give you a reminder on how that challenge course works. Two retries, can't use both retries on the same obstacle. Now we've had retries in the past for skills uh, because we've had challenge skills. So the athletes that, especially those that have been to the world championship are fairly familiar with that process. This is the first time we're doing it in a course. And we, we mentioned, Mary, that those resets can start to come into the strategy a little bit. Yeah, I think we are definitely going to see more strategy applied with those resets, especially after seeing the uh, placement course. The placement course was pretty difficult. I mean, straightforward obstacles, but definitely a level up from what we saw in mature kids and kids division. So those retries are what you want to use if you are stuck on an obstacle and it's going to take you more time to clear the obstacle than it would to reset and start the obstacle again with better execution. So this is for our top four positions. The challenge course determines your placement for the entire competition, whether or not you're going to finals. So there's a lot on the line here. 
And I'm not really sure I know how it's going to go, Alex, because as you mentioned, we had a diabolical trampoline jump that just took out so many athletes before we really had a chance to see how they can execute on those tough upper body obstacles. I really think it's going to be anybody's game. Yeah, we pointed out Noah Brown, an athlete that did very well at Motive last week and has performed very well at the World Championship. He went out on that obstacle, so we've certainly seen some shocking falls on that obstacle. Although we did see three finishers, Jai Witt be the fastest of those three. Yes, the fastest by quite a margin, 10 whole seconds. Liam Joyce coming in at 50 seconds, and then Fletcher with a time of 119. So a pretty significant separation here between first place and third. I just wonder how fast Noah Brown would have cleared the course because he just had lightning fast pace across the first obstacle. And you could tell he was really going for it. Zero hesitation hitting the trampoline and unfortunately just didn't have enough to get to uh, the butterfly. So going to be an interesting race. One thing I'm really looking forward to seeing is that we saw definitely the taller competitors have an advantage with that trampoline obstacle. I really want to see how the shorter competitors are able to take on this grip gauntlet if because they have a little bit less weight to hold up that they're able to hang on a little bit longer. Uh, I think we all know somebody who's, you know, in the preteen or mature kids division with an hour long dead hang. I certainly can think of a couple uh, at my gym, and I'm sure, Mary, you can think of some up in New England as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wonder how those smaller athletes are going to do on this challenge course and how long they're going to be able to hang. Yeah, the smaller athletes should be should have a not as difficult a time as the larger athletes, right? They have less body weight to hang up. They have, um, you know, their feet are not going to be dragging on the mat, so they don't have to worry too much about engaging their core to keep those knees up. The taller athletes have the disadvantage because they do actually have more body weight that they have to carry around, more um, lengthier limbs that they have to be conscious of where they're going. However, the reach that a taller athlete has can reduce the amount of moves. So even if the shorter athletes are somewhat physiologically advantaged from a grip strength standpoint, the taller athletes definitely have that wingspan advantage that will likely help them in the course just as well. It'll certainly be fun to see. This challenge course is going to be brutal on the athlete's grip. So I am definitely looking forward to seeing these athletes trying to take down some of the toughest obstacles that they will face in their ninja careers. Yes, Dave has created quite the course for us today. Dave Ravi, you saw him in our introduction video, putting together some, some mad scientist type uh, pieces of paper there looking <laughs> creating all <of> the <laughs> obstacles for this course uh, we've definitely seen a lot of interesting things come out of um, the ninja academy uh, especially during the ninja challenge league uh, lots of interesting balance obstacles lots of interesting upper body innovations um, one thing i love about watching australia competitions is just the differences in holds so i'm sure we'll see some more of them as our first athlete ashley congreen is getting ready to get started here. Already an interesting start. We're so used to seeing athletes chalk up, not necessarily spraying water, but actually getting her feet cleaned up as I believe we're going to be seeing, yes, some quad steps coming up first. Yep, and that's not an easy quad step. That's quite a lot of moves. A lot of the steps that we saw the mature kids athletes working on were pretty slick, so I support the decision to, to get the bottom of the shoes wet. Now our female athletes, we only have three preteen females competing today. So in order to qualify for the uh, finals, they have to clear the first three obstacles. So still a lot of work to be done and oh, look at this balance obstacle. This looks brutal, but she is making it through very nicely. So easy. That looks really fun. I wouldn't say brutal, but to each their own. <laughs> It, obstacles can be both brutal and fun. This is true. And speaking of brutal, yeah, uh, looks Hatch like just looking little... like the the former and not the latter. Mm, absolutely. Well, nice long time limit, about three minutes. Good use of her reach here. 
Yeah, really requiring a lot of hand grip, forearm strength with that vertical grip. And yeah, we do see some unique obstacles here in Australia. This is not something I can say that I've seen in the States. It's funny how hand tools have become... Oh, goodness gracious. Funny how hand tools have become the most recent ninja implement. But that is going to do it for this athlete's run. She had some great moments in those lower body obstacles. And unfortunately, without having the clear of three obstacles that is going to bump Ashley Congreen out of contention for going to the finals. Absolutely yeah. brutal third obstacle. We've seen some really tough third obstacles. Uh, we saw switch grips last week at Motive, sky hooks two weeks ago. These course designers know that Premier Series Finals is going to be the best of the best among the best of the best. And they are not handing these spots out for free. It looked like Ashley had kind of figured out her movements there. You know, taking wider moves. Yeah, she Really did. just being very conscious with the placement. So I'm hoping that Angelina and Sophia learn from her. It looks like those um, axes need to be carried on to some moving uh, placements as well. So I don't know if that'll be the end of the obstacle or a touch point, but hopefully Angelina can get through it. Kind of reminiscent of Axe Factor, the last obstacle at the World Championship, which we in the elite division saw Noah Munier and Tyler Smith very famously become the first stage three buzzers. Tyler Smith, of course, the first to hit buzzers on all three stages. But these preteens looking to take it down as the third obstacle on this course. When we said Dave Robbie was going to challenge these athletes. We weren't kidding, but look how focused Angelina is, barely moving that battering ram balance beam. Angelina is a little bit shorter than Ashley was, but look at that reach right there. Oh, and these moves are super efficient. So fluid. Got to stay locked in. Ideally, you want to beat it on the first shot, not waste energy before taking it on a second time. And oh my goodness, look at all the holds after this. There I thought maybe they were being one or two after this, but there's, oh my goodness. But wait, there's more. But she gets a, she gets a uh -oh. ring right here as long as she can pull up to it. Okay, there we go. Oh no! Oh no! Heartbreaking for Angelina. She's used up so much energy. Fortunately, though, she'll get a retry, and she knows exactly what she needs to do on the second attempt. You know, I, I hope that she'll realize after taking a backswing that she can be a little bit more aggressive on the pull on these. And love to see this right now. She knows she's got to get out of there quickly, so she's making super big moves here. If anything, I think I'd like to see her get a little bit higher on these hatchets. Yeah, that would give a little bit more peace of mind. It looks like the handles widen out a little bit towards the bottom. Might feel more comfortable to hold it there, but if she's to slip, she might be Ooh, out of luck. Oh, that one's barely in, though. Gets it back. And now time to get a nice big pull here. There Gets it is. Gets up to the ring this time. Gets the ring. And I think she has a birdhouse available to her, but she's getting out of there. Angelina Carey. First today through three obstacles in the preteen division. She has qualified for Premier Series Finals, a giant accomplishment. Although slipping right off of the bungee box, let's say hopefully she's able to get that on a second attempt now that she knows how she's going to need to grab that. Yeah, you see her shaking out those hands. It looks like she is really gassed. She's really going to have to absorb and hang on to these bungees really tightly. Might want to catch him in a little bit more of a lock off than she did the first time. Here's the second attempt. Barely oh! grabbing it. She has very few bungees. They are sliding out of her hands. Can she get to the next box before that falls? Almost. Oh. Just barely not able to reach it, but fighting like an absolute champion through hatchets, getting to the end of the obstacle, falling, and then beating it on a second attempt to put her into first place. First place, and officially, we will see her at Ferox 
in November. Wow, great effort. Angelina moving into first place with one athlete to go. That is Sophia Davies, who was the only athlete to defeat the trampoline butterfly earlier today in the placement course. She earned this opportunity to see exactly what she needs to do on hatchets, perhaps learned a little bit about the bungee box. Yes, and we one will thing see will... how she's able to put to the test. I think one thing that'll work to Sophia's advantage was that the place where her um, competitors went out was due to reach and she's a little bit taller so that's going to be an advantage for her as long as we get past the battering ram. Nicely yeah, done. Yeah, wobbly there. Able to get through, that's the important part as she moves on to hatchets. And it looks like she has a little bit longer of a wingspan. Let's see if she puts it to use here. Taking about the same amount of moves as the previous runner. But looking a little bit more comfortable, although missing that hatchet. Oh, wow. I went for I, it. Yeah, I feel like she might have even been able to skip to the third one. We'll see how she approaches it this time. Dave Ravi, always a stickler for the rules. <laughs> Athletes uh, don't get the hatches to start with. like that it's right, fair and consistent with the last round. Attempt. Oh, and I don't like the looks of this. She's looking really extended here. Those moves aren't quite as efficient as they were before. But I hope she fights through this. And, and... There's one move. Okay, gets right. into that second one this time. She's being really aggressive trying to get the hatchets in. As you can see, she was just trying to bat it on that fourth floating hook, and unfortunately, she is unable to complete three obstacles. That means Angelina Carey will win the day as our sole finals qualifier. Wow, great effort out of all three of our female athletes. We got to see them Certainly. tackle a bit more of those upper body obstacles. Angelina coming out with the win on top really showed a lot of fight and a lot of grip strength honestly getting through hatchets twice that's no easy feat absolutely true very impressive out of Angelina hopefully leading the way for our boys to take on this course here in just a little bit I'll be curious to see how the male athletes fare with the battering ram. Typically, balance is definitely a strength of female athletes. We actually saw at the World Championships that in most divisions, the females had a much higher clear rate of the rolling log obstacles than the males did. So that's hmm. the second obstacle in this course. Hopefully, we don't see any athletes having to use up their retries there. That's very interesting. I didn't know that. Oh, I suppose that does oh, make oh. sense. Yes, we do. I won't say all the analysis at the Commentator Ninja channel, but we do a fair amount. Fair amount. It's, Always... uh, it certainly helped us out from a WNL admin standpoint in the past. Actually, um, I did a little bit of math myself, and I found that women hit three times as many buzzers at the 2023 World Championship than did at the 2022 World Championship. So we are very pleased at the success of, of our ladies at the World Championship this past season. And also worth noting that uh, the changes made to the courses definitely helped out with that. So great move forward for the WNL. Yeah, and I'm really glad to see that being more socially accepted in the ninja community because I know that that was a, a bit of a point of contention in the past, but it seems like that's becoming a lot more accepted. Adam Byrne will be the first of our gentlemen to take on the course. Little bit of trouble with the stride there on Steph, so they're able to get through. All right, and let's take a look at how Adam approaches the battering ram. Nice wide ram, probably about two inches, maybe three. Not too bad, and Adam is quickly through. 
Yeah, Took slow a nice and steady. Approach. A little bit worried about him reaching these hatchets, though. Okay, he's got it. And despite being one of our shorter athletes, he's able to go all the way to the end in only two reaches, but lost that hatchet, able to find it again, and right into the first. Now these hatchets, they, they probably feel nice and secure once you get them in, but there's always that brief moment before you've put all of your weight on it that you're just not sure if you have it right there. Oh, getting a little bit squirrely here. Yeah, bail out, this go to is the next reminiscent. One, maybe. There you go. Ah, good skip. Definitely reminiscent rules, of, of the fish hook obstacle from uh, the mature kids and the kids divisions. But we are through to these bungees. And Adam gets up there. Great swing as he's trying to reach the box. Gets it. Wow. Now and these the are arrowheads. interesting, interesting obstacle, those arrowheads. I haven't seen a hold quite like that before. Minute and 10 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, I'd love to see some Time of these for... obstacles coming into the States. And oh my goodness, we have a floating double step. We do not see you this never... very often. It's never fun to do devil steps. And it's, it's certainly not fun to do them when they're moving either. Right, traditional pegboard obstacle here. It's even less fun when we have to do pegs after. A lot of a lot of hang time in this course, absolutely. Really testing our athletes' technical abilities. Seeing just how much tech is starting to crawl its way into international ninja. Traditionally international. Ninja has been a lot more, you know, grip intensive rather than technical. That move right there, definitely grip intensive. Dropping down onto a single peg, that's a challenging move. I don't care who you are, but the stabilization that that requires and the grip strength that requires, especially hanging onto another peg in the other hand and not truly being able to match. That's, that's going to be tough. That's going to be a very tough move. With 12 seconds left, Adam doesn't have enough time to beat this obstacle, but he has shown a lot of poise, being the first male runner of this course, being the furthest athlete so far, and really leading the way for athletes to come. Very impressive by Adam. So we're at a grip gauntlet already, and there's still three more obstacles to go in this course that we haven't even seen yet. Oh gosh, I just realized that. Diabolical. Yeah, this is getting this is getting nasty, kids. All right. Well, Thomas Greaves is going to be up soon. We have six more athletes, or seven more athletes, who are going to be going to. See if they can beat a Dave Ravi grip gauntlet. I love Thomas Dave's a little uh, bit taller. legally distinct uh, video game t-shirt. <laughs> you know Dave loves Pokemon. Here's Thomas. Makes his way through the steps and over to the battering ram. Of course, the battering ram you might be familiar with is an upper body obstacle. This is a lower body obstacle, and look how much it's swinging, but Thomas able to power through. Excellent awareness of where he was in space and using that swing to his advantage, making smaller moves on the hatchet. Not sure how much I like this approach, just knowing how much else we have at the on the back half of this course, but it seems to be working. A nice skip. Yeah, I was oh, wondering that's when we were start seeing athletes skip. We we've mentioned the differences in American and international ninja. Australia has very traditionally been that you have to use every element in front of you. So I was wondering 
if our athletes were gonna you know subconsciously think they had to use every hole on the hatchets but thankfully thomas although he was unable to reach that box uh had a very heads up move there on the hatchets yes and here launching from the bungees it looked like he was trying to set for a linked movement there um led with his chest on that pop but he just didn't have quite enough momentum to get there so hopefully we'll see a bit of an adjustment his second time through here they do have cliff ledges on the sides but i would think the special delivery hold would be easier and that's saying something special yeah. delivery holds are not easy and thomas just wasn't able to get the height off of those bunches he had the distance but needed to get a little bit more up And that's going to do it for. That's going to do it for Thomas here today. We will be moving on to our next athlete, Leo Garcia. As we go further and further into the placement course results, these are your athletes that have gotten further and further through the course, with the exception here of Noah Brown. After Noah Brown got past the first obstacle, but a lot of these athletes just had a. A little bit of a trip up with the trampoline, but thankfully no trampolines in this particular division. So we're doing we're doing well on this course. At least that we know of. That we know of. This is true. Well, Leo is underway and he slipped off. Maybe we were right about that uh, water spray there at the start that we saw earlier. Now, oh, Leo is we wearing go. Nikes, which typically do not have the best grip in the soles but really only one more obstacle here that he has to worry about and that's this balance obstacle right here well he gets through that Great nicely work. has burned a retry but most importantly is that he's continuing on the course a little bit of trouble with those hatchets but i think starting to find his way now yeah, obstacles like this, they're they are basically pegboard obstacles. So if you can remember to engage your shoulders and shift your hips away from the direction that you are moving, you do yourself, do yourself a lot of favors. Well, he is looking very smooth on the second part of this obstacle. Although taking a bat there on that fourth one, and unfortunately taking a little bit of a bat there on the fifth, there we go, finds it. Up to the ring. What a challenge that here. ring being so high above that hatchet. It just adds that little element of difficulty you wouldn't think of. Ooh. Not quite able to get up to the bungees. Knows how hard he's going to have to push off now. Yeah, he grabbed the very tail end of those. You really want to grab high above the knots so that you have them down at the bottom and you can keep the whole uh, bungee strand in your hand. Easier said oh than done. Look at this. He's holding gosh. on to one strand on his left hand. He, I didn't even know that was possible. Is he going to get there? Oh, no. Great flight out of Leo, though. Managing to hang on with the left hand with only one bungee strand. If you've done bungees before, you know just how difficult that move was. There it is again. And painful, too. A singular bungee is not fun to hold on to. Certainly true. Great work. Leo is, however, currently in third place because he was the slowest through hatchets. Nevertheless, hatchets a brutal obstacle, and he should certainly be proud for his run. Well, we are starting to get down to the wire here. Here is Noah Brown. Here's an athlete we've been excited to see from the beginning. Certainly showing why we give these athletes two separate courses in the Premier Series, because he shocked us all with an early fail in the placement. Of course, uh, preteens we've seen before. I don't know if you've heard of Charlie Ball, Mary, but Charlie failed the second obstacle back at Ferox, ended up winning the whole thing. Noah would love to join him, and by the looks of it, things are looking pretty good for Noah. 28 seconds he beat the first three obstacles. What? 
That's insane. I love the efficiency, not only just because furthest the fastest, but also less time on the hands. He's really going to want to conserve everything that he has uh, for these next couple of obstacles. Total grip, grip gauntlet right here. Well, Noah's but in this first is place by about a minute. This is the Noah Brown I wanted to see. This is the champion of the NCL League. You know that he is moving very quickly, moving with purpose, and you also know he's competed here before. A lot of competitions for that league happen here. Well, he skips the downwards peg part that we were worried about as he moves on to the cliffhanger. It's strictly a test of endurance. I'm sure we will see he's this get ramped through. up for the later divisions, but Noah has made his way through, and he's going to have to take on the Salmon Ladder, the first Salmon Ladder we've seen in Premier Series. Wow, and in the preteens as well. It's becoming more and more acceptable to put flying bar moves, salmon ladder moves for the preteens because they just keep getting stronger and stronger. Well, and speaking of that, Noah up. is. Oh my goodness, Noah Brown with an incredible run, just the warp wall left. He will climb up to the buzzer. And maybe this time it should have been two minutes because he just went sub two. Very impressive out of Noah. Wow. Showing us why he is the champ. And now the athletes that are going to follow him have a really hard time to beat. If Noah's time can hold out for two more runners, he'll have guaranteed himself a spot in the finals. Noah just demolishing this challenge course. Looked so casual throughout. Barely looked like he broke a sweat. And although we have some very talented ninjas behind him, he has put up a very strong time that potentially could see him qualify for Premier Series Finals. We know he's been over to the States once. We would love to see him over again. Challenging the best preteens in the States. So as we've now seen four runners complete three obstacles and with four to go, we will see one runner clinch that top four spot and another runner bounced out of contention for each run that we have remaining. Right now, Leo is on the bubble in fourth place. With the caliber of the athletes that we have here today, I do expect to see him Bumped out, unfortunately, but you never know. We had some thoughts and predictions for our last couple competitions at Ferox and at Motive, and we were completely uh, proven wrong. <laughs> Certainly true. Well, Logan is underway, taking the safe approach on the steps. That's fine. We don't want to see him burn a retry, and he was struggling a little bit there, but able to find his way through. And not, not looking super comfortable on lower body obstacles, but doing well. Hopefully he can save it and just get out of there. Oh, he needed oh. to lean a little bit to the left. First today to fall in the battering ram. He'll use his second shot here. Oh man, he's looking worried, taking a deep breath. Come on, Logan, you can do this. Everybody has fallen on a balance obstacle in a comp before, and we know just how mental this can be. Especially once you've fallen oh. on him once. Oh my goodness. Oh, he must be devastated. So just unfortunate could not, there for Logan. Yeah, just could not keep his his chest and his head above his feet. Really what you want to do on any of your balance obstacles. And here we go. Leo has still, uh, is still in the top four. We'll see if that holds after our next couple runners. But, you know, we had high hopes for Logan too. So, what else to see? Yeah, we do now have the three runners who hit a buzzer in the placement course. And that placement course was quite difficult, actually. So, these three athletes are incredibly talented. But still with that time that Noah put up, that is currently putting him in first place. Let's see if Fletcher can chase it down. Three-minute time limit, and he is already... About to beat the second obstacle, so he's flying. Grabbing the hatchets. Hopefully we'll get some nice long reaches here. A 
not quite as long or as fluid as I'd like to see out of Fletcher, but it's working. Oh, maybe it's not working. It's working again. Okay. <laughs> he turned it off and he turned it back on again. Almost like a light switch, except it's a hatchet. Wrong he's, tool here. He's starting to figure it out. Ooh, and I don't like the placement of that hatchet there. Okay, good. good. I think he might be thinking dismount from here. Never mind, he's going to the ring. Definitely the smarter call. Well, he's through in just about a minute. Time to tackle these bungees. Oh, oh look at this! He's got one strand my. again! And on both oh hands, my he's going down to what? one strand on what? one. Okay. Speaking of things that have just turned off, our brains have just exploded at what we just saw. How do you how do you do that? I do you, don't know. How do you hang on to a single bungee with two hands? All right, that's a better grab right there. Yes, much better. Much improvement <laughs> from Fletcher. And it is rewarded with a grab into that box. Just needs to make his way across these arrowheads, and he will be on to the double steps. Only seen one other athlete get past this point so far. Noah Brown only wanted to get all the way through. And Fletcher deciding to drop down. Just didn't look like he was super comfortable with where his hand placement was. Yeah, that's... But that's his second retry. He's going to have to get this. Interesting. Taking a moment to shake it out. Burning his last retry. But he is powering through now. Only going to get one attempt on this pegboard. Minute to go. He is looking, looking a little tired here. But making the first move on the pegboard, lining up for the second, a good reach. 45 the seconds accuracy left. There. Oh. Not able to get that last peg in, but a very strong run by Fletcher Manning that will provisionally see him in the top four. Nice work from Fletcher getting that qualification spot. <laughs> I, I, I want to be clear. I, I'm laughing because I am just shocked at his incredible grip strength to be able to hold on to that. Astonishing stuff there, Adam one, Fletcher. One bungee. One bungee, Fletcher. One, singular. Wow. So well, Fletcher, Fletcher is in moving into second. second, and actually, that secures him in the top four with only two runners to go. Fantastic. All right, here is Liam Joyce, the second in the Joyce Bros duo. We were talking earlier about his younger brother from the kids' division who achieved first place. We'll see if we can get a repeat from his older brother here. Going to require a clear, need... though, although we did see Liam be the first to clear the placement course a little bit ago. So far, so good on the batting ram. Now we just found out some interesting facts. Whoa! Okay, then. <laughs> Putting that wingspan in his advantage. So Liam actually broke his neck doing bar tech. And wow. this is one of his first competitions back. Able to static that box first today. And broken necks are no joke, as I'm sure all of you are aware. So incredible resiliency out of this young man to come right back into doing Ninja. And looking like he never left. I know, and look at that time. He still has loads of time left to finish this course. Gonna need to monkey bar up to these handles. Oh, not quite. Needs to get Enough. one more reach. There you go. All right, on the time for some cliffs. Now these are nice cliffs. You can see how thick they are. These are nice cliffs, but there's a lot of them. It's a lot of nice cliffs. 
Sometimes too much of a good thing is too much of a good thing. But well, it's a good through. thing for Liam. And, and usually we talk about, you know, getting revenge on an obstacle when you fail it. This is a special type of revenge for Liam. One of his first comps back, getting to take on a Bartek obstacle. Imagine, number one, what he must be feeling right now. But number two, being able to get through this obstacle that caused him an injury. But just falling there on the salmon ladder, he'll get to shake out as he uses his retry. Realistically, since he can't use both retries on the same obstacle, this will be it for him. Yeah, he'll need to fully clear it and then go hit the warped wall. He has a minute left to do it. I think that's plenty of time, but certainly he's going to need to stay efficient and, and really hang on to that bar. I think it was just grip strength giving out at the end right there. Well, he had the chance to shake out, thankfully. Made it on the clock. First jump good. This time the second jump is good. I'm. Is he going to go up one more or reach? He's going to reach. Smart move. Just make sure you have oh, it. it. Oh, and back. the bar spun. It rolled back. Liam. Oh, Liam, you got to reach around the front oh. side or the back side of that. Oh, oh it's man. Tough and just break a... for Liam. The good news, though, is he'll finish on the podium and qualify for finals. Wow. What a phenomenal performance. Uh, just so impressive to hear that he's coming back from, from such an injury. And just as, as you were saying, just a, a little mistake. Just did not grab the spinning bar the way that he should have. But still a phenomenal performance. Second place. The worst he can get today is third. We noted that Fletcher secured his spot with his run. Adam Byrne is currently on the bubble as we move to Jai, our final runner, Jai Whitby, who blazed through the placement course in just 40 seconds. Can he keep that same pace up here on the challenge course? You know, I would completely support it, but at the same time, I might question it a little bit. There's a lot of upper body that you need to do. So you don't really want to totally gas yourself out trying to go super fast through like the first six or seven obstacles. You want to have enough energy left in the tank so looks like jai is a naturally fast athlete so i'm sure his casual pace is, is probably going to look pretty fast to us yeah i mean this is the fastest we've seen anyone go through these first two obstacles today he's able to make this long reach out here on hatchets really using his reach to his advantage oh fix that smart move well, three down. I think we might see a static like we just saw a moment. No, he's going for the cliffs. Okay, then. Skipping the honestly, second arrow completely. He is on a mission. That is nuts. That's honestly a smart move to go for those cliffs right there. Easier to, to make sure that you grab. You've got the whole box to work with. With a special, you only have... you got to be really precise. I like that from, from Jai. I like that plan. And we're already on... The third to last obstacle. Are we sure we, are we, sure we told him this wasn't another placement course? I I I think this man just likes to go fast no matter what type of course. He has it not is. stopped for a split second this entire course. Actually going now up that, an additional rung that he didn't need to do just because it got him there a little bit quicker. Look at this hopping down. He is going to destroy the fastest time. Only using about half of his time limit, and Jai wow. gets the sweep. He has won Premier Series and secures his ticket to Brooklyn. And we have had some super fast clears on the male side and super fast first place runs at all of our qualifiers. We had Charlie Ball in the uh, Ferox competition. We had Alex Asconi just light it up at Motive, clearing with margins well above the rest of the competitive field. Jai has done the same. What do we have in store for when we get to Ferox in November? Look at that. Imagine A minute that and 26 showdown. seconds versus a minute 56. That's a difference of 30 seconds. Jai is just performing above the rest of his field right now. 
Oh man, I can't I can't wait to see a showdown of this proportion. I mean, we were talking about that Charlie Ball versus Alex Ascone showdown that we're going to get in Brooklyn in November. Who else are we going to add to that? We don't even know. And, and, and still now got a potentially season. adding Jai Whippy to the mix after that performance, using less than half of his time limit in both courses. It's going to be nuts. Unreal. That's all I can say. It's going to be nuts. I can't wait. And we still have a half of a season, more than half of a season, to go find more just dominant preteen athletes. It's, it. it's, it's the best of the best of the best. What, what else can we say? Well, I will say this much about Noah Brown, who last week cleared the challenge course and missed out on qualifying by two seconds, did it again today and left no doubt. So after that heartbreaker a week ago, he will find his way into the Premier Series finals at Ferox alongside Jai, of course, but also Liam Joyce and Fletcher Manning finding their way into that top four. Taking one more look at Noah's run. He had what was the first athlete to skip on hatchets and really use his reach to his advantage. Definitely set the tone for the rest of the athletes coming after him. So just really impressive that he's able to hang on. And here is Liam's run through the placement course. Yeah, that we was... saw some sparks there and it was great to see it play out on the challenge course as well yeah the placement course was really feast or famine we saw four athletes on the on the boys side two on the girls go down on just the second obstacle and then we still were able to get three buzzers out of that and then the challenge course was a little bit more spread out and a little bit more grip intensive but both of them were incredibly fun to watch I really like the endurance that our male athletes have displayed today, getting all the way through this course. You know, I think the placement runs, the the speed of the athletes that we're going to have at the finals is it, everyone's going to have to go fast. But having that grip strength on your side for the more technical, lengthier challenge course, uh, I think that that will serve them very well. Both Jai Whitney or Jai Whitby and Noah Brown uh, really just clearing and demonstrating that they can hang as most ninjas can over and here is our sole female qualifier it was angelina carey oh no we have just switched back over to noah but angelina carey winning the competition for the ladies an incredible day here at ninja academy in perth and guess what, Mary? We get to do it all again tomorrow. We can't wait to be back here for our teen and amateur and elite division. I hope that you'll be tuning into the stream to see who else we can add to our exciting lineup of athletes in finals at Ferox Athletics. Thank you so much for tuning in today. This is Mary Layton, the Commentator Ninja, signing off. And I'm Alex Cunningham. We will see you back here in Western Australia tomorrow.